Today, like many days, I'm going to be designing a character. But unlike most days, I'm not going to be doing it on my own. I'm going to be doing it with some of your help. I asked you guys some this or that questions to help design a character. So we're going to be following these prompts. I've got the results right here and we're going to make a character. I posted these questions almost a day ago, so the answers have had a lot of time to brew. But yeah, let's start in my sketchbook. I want the finished drawing to either be digital or on like a separate piece of paper, but I think it's a good idea to start in the sketchbook. So I guess we could go ahead and start with the first question. I asked if I was drawing a creature or a human, and it looks like by almost 7,000, creature one. Let me quickly just make note of that. I'm gonna draw a chicken to symbolize. I don't know why, because I don't draw chickens. <laughs> it was an idea, okay? We'll leave it at that. Uh, I asked for a body type, and it looks like we got the female body type. I'm just gonna go ahead and draw this chicken with a more feminine body type. <laughs> This isn't the character, we're just we're just making note of the answers here. I'm gonna I think I'm gonna just make the executive decision and decide that the character is going to be kind of human shaped. I didn't ask that, but I think it'll just work well for my brain and what I like to draw. And hopefully we won't end up with something that looks exactly like this. Girl bod. Oh, and then next ask for like name gender suggestions. I meant that I wanted like, you know both of them in one, but I don't, I was just perusing the uh, answers here and I don't think people really understood. So we're just gonna have to live with whatever I get. <laughs> Let me just load as many of these as I can and then we'll try to randomly pick one. Oh, no, there it goes. Doop, 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 doop. And then, oh, we can go up a little, we can go back down, we can go, ooh, which direction is it even going at this point? And then, ooh, 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 ooh. Boom. Ferocious, the snail lady, suggested by Zoya Birch. Wait, what happened? Why does it say pie? I'm an Instagram pleb. I don't know what's going on. But when I click on ferocious snail lady, I get pie. So I, I don't know. We'll, we'll write down all that because I don't understand. Uh, we got pie. Ooh, with a little steam. Oh, look, look, look at our delicious pie. Oh, well, that's a different person's name. Now I'm extra confused. I click on this one. Their username is Zoya Birch. When I click on the answer, it tells me which of Thunder's response was pie. So I guess the universe wants me to use both of those. So we got a snail lady. <laughs> that's not what I asked for, but here we go. <laughs> okay, we got a nice snail. We're gonna keep it simple here. We're just trying to figure out all the answers. And then once we have all of the answers, I can like take a step back and see where we're going from there. And I guess the name is Ferocious. <laughs> I don't think that was supposed to be a name, but there we go. Ferocious. Snail lady who likes pies. Oh, this is gonna drive me nuts. Let me just take this off. <laughs> Next time I'll be more clear about like what I'm looking for. <laughs> but for now it's my fault. So we're just gonna, we're gonna live with this. So let's find out more about Ferocious. Let's see, is Ferocious into the neon colors or neutrals? And 51% of people wanted neutrals. Now, neon and neutral, I don't think, are those even opposites? I don't know. So I'm thinking if we just use neutral colors, like blacks and grays and whites and maybe like neutral browns. Like, I feel like we could even use neutral pinks if that's even a thing. <laughs> so neutral color palette. All right, and then the next question I asked was, what time period did they live in? And 58% said between the years of 1901 and 2000. So uh, 20th century. I asked this question kind of meaning like when they were born. So that's definitely going to like impact their clothes probably, their hair styles and different things like that. All right, next question. Oh, I asked if they were a hero or a villain and 61% of people wanted them, wanted her to be bad, which I guess works because her name's Ferocious. <laughs> bad guy. It's kind of, they kind of fitting well together. Born in the 20th century, so was I, but you know, <laughs> we'll probably push it a little further. And then they're a bad guy. All right, we got more, I think. I asked if they were talented or not. And 69% said they would like 
ferocious to be very talented. And I asked if the hair, if the character's hair was short or long. And so it looks like, ooh, this was a really close one. I kept looking at this throughout the day and it was like 50-50 for the longest time, but it looks like long hair pointed out in the nick of time with 51%. So we've got to draw our snail lady with long hair. That's going to be weird. <laughs> but let me just symbolize it here. <laughs> Ta-da! All right. And then next I asked another funny little one. Are they more peanut butter or jelly? And 53% uh, said jelly. All right, next question. Is their outfit more for cold or warm weather? And 53% said cold weather. So we're probably gonna have some more long sleeves and things like that. All right, then next. I asked if this character is more earthy or celestial and we got 69% celestial. I'm kind of happy with that question. I don't, I don't know what it's going to do for me. It's probably going to cause trouble, but there we go. Is that even how you spell that word? So maybe we can use a lot of stars. We could use planets. I love drawing stars, so I'm really excited about this one. <laughs> All right, what was, I think there's one more question. And that was, are they more biological or mechanical? And 70% preferred biological. So no mech suits here. <laughs> All right, then that was the base. That was like the base questions that I asked. So from now on, I have to come up with it, but let's kind of try and stick with this groundwork for a little while before I ask for more help. There, there's a lot to unpack here. Let's first start with like the body because that's kind of like the base. So they want it, it's a female um, and a slug though. Is there a way to make a snail look like a human? What even? <laughs> now we're either gonna have to go like full on snail or I have to find a way to kind of humanize them. You know, kind of like, like, I don't want it to be like a human with snail elements. I want it more like a snail with opposable thumbs. That's like where my brain's going, you know, kind of like all the bugs in a bug's life kind of thing. It might not be possible, but let's, let's, let's try that first. <laughs> so basically they need to have like a head and a body. I mean, the caterpillars didn't really, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> let's learn an experience. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Let me just draw a character and see if we can throw on some elements, even though that kind of like goes away against what I just said. But let me just kind of, oh, what if the, ooh. Okay, so slugs are like kind of goopy on the bottom, you know? Like this, what if that's what the legs look like? They're just like a goop. <laughs> Maybe they're little antennas. I think that's what they're called. Oh, and we need long hair. That's another thing. That's an easy one to like sort of, what if the hair is kind of part of that goopy stuff? I don't know what the, well, we, I should find the word for that. I don't want to sound like an idiot the whole time. <laughs> Maybe half the time, but not the whole time, you know. That, that's where I draw the line. Slug anatomy. No, snail, snail. It's a gastropod. Okay, yeah, we're learning. Okay, so they have optical tentacles on the top of their head. They have little sensory tentacles, lower. Ooh, they have this thing on their back called a mantle. Oh, you're gonna love this. This squishy part that I'm talking about is actually called the skirt. How perfect. All their butt and everything is actually up here. That's really weird. Well, especially when the, it's a human shaped character, I guess. We're just trying to figure this out <laughs> one step at a time. This is called the skirt. So I love that we actually made it a skirt. Uh, the shell should probably, how far into the shell do they go? Now from like the side, I'm guessing the character, so we got like the skirt, but then we have the shell on the back. You put it up higher, more like a backpack. Well, for now, let's just keep it down here. Then the hair kind of comes down this way and is maybe part of the body. That's kind of how I'm visualizing it right now. She needs to be a bad guy though. So let's uh, let's put a little more personality into this face. <laughs> I think the natural thing to do would be just make her scowl. Well, they have a lot of texture and stuff. We have enough freedom to like make the clothes and the body almost one. I mean, if I think back to like Bugs Life, they don't wear clothes. <laughs> so I think we'll be fine if we want to like take, I mean, actually, what am I worried about? Like, it's just a drawing. <laughs> we could do whatever we want. We don't have the 20th century yet. Oh, <gasps> this is perfect. It kind of looks like a bustle. I was like doing that without even thinking about it. Oh, but that's perfect. Kind of what did fashion look like in like 1901, like right at the turn of the century? Okay, there's not really a bustle there. It's a little bit more slim than I thought, but it is kind of the similar silhouette to what I've got right here. 
Let's just look at 1900s in general. Ooh, you might have to include a hat. As long as it's something that fits into the 19th century. We could go 1990s if we wanted, so I've got a lot of leeway here. But I'm thinking this gives me like a skirt vibe of a snail. Looks like bustles were kind of out by the 1900s. Like really big ones, but we're going to have to exaggerate, I think. Oh, wait, what's this? S-curb silhouette. Man, do you ever just think about all the things that you don't know? And how many there are? Like, goof. Yeah, I don't think we can go with 1940s to 50s. That's not the silhouette I'm thinking will work here. Yeah, 1920s, it's the completely wrong silhouette. I think we're gonna have to go with like early 1900s here. More Edwardian. Yeah, it looks like they sometimes they have like a little bit of a bustle. We're just gonna have to really exaggerate. Keep drawing your hair dark. I don't know if that'll stay that way. I'm kind of trying to use the hair as part of the body just so that I can get a different silhouette with the dress section. So like this is hair, this thing, and then that way I can use like a different color for the dress. Now slugs, I when I think of like snails and slugs, I think of like rounded shapes. So I think we should probably keep the face rounded. Now the 1900s all had a lot of updos. So I wonder if we could just kind of like include one in the hair. Do you want a hat? <gasps> Ooh, I love the contrast between this huge shape, a skinny shape, a huge shape, and then like a smaller shape. That's just, that's just, ooh, that's, that's really, really fun. <laughs> it's almost like a half up, half down do. And the hat kind of like hides her tentacles. Now it's definitely the time to kind of experiment with shapes while we're thumbnailing and brainstorming as a huge hat. <laughs> she is going to be elegant. Ooh, what about big poofy sleeves? I don't know if they kind of get lost in there. We could bring the bustle down a little. And then you'll see those a little bit more. Kind of like show that shape. You can have it kind of drag a little further back. That way you see these fun sleeves. Give her a little walking stick. <laughs> Ooh, I think we're getting somewhere. This is kind of like a fun silhouette. So there's something we're definitely missing. Okay, cold weather. Probably just have to give her like a coat or something. Ooh, talented. We gotta find her some kind of talent. And I don't want it to be making pies. That's just... Nah. She makes evil pies. Which she goes to the same convention as Sweeney Todd, maybe. <laughs> I'm kind of fond of this silhouette back here. I want to make sure it looks like a gastropod. I can go ahead and draw bigger, too. People in the 1900s had excellent posture. To a fault, <laughs> probably. Okay, then we have that skirt section. Big poofy sleeves. But the hair, what do we do with the hair? I'm going to have to, I'm gonna have to try and stick to a round, round face. Super long hair there. Maybe some coming from this side too. And then gotta somehow fit this whole snail thing in. <laughs> Do I still like this idea? <laughs> we could change it from being the hair to like a cape and then that fits into the cold weather theme. Or we could just give her long hair. I don't know. I don't know. I guess it's up to me. She also isn't giving me that bad guy vibe yet. Okay, I think I'm having this, the shell's coming up a little too high. We want to keep it separated from those sleeves. Otherwise we're going to lose the contrast there. Or it's all about contrast. Yeah, I think I'm going to cut out the, the Edwardian hairstyle and just leave it straight down. But then include the Edwardian looking hat. That way we can create that contrast. <laughs> there goes that word again. Between the large hat and then like the slim, sleek hair. I mean, we're already dressing her very nice. So she's obviously not a complete klutz. She can put one arm in a sleeve and whatnot. Make sure she has nice long sleeves so she can survive a colder climate. And not to mention she's got her home on her back right there, right? <laughs> Bad guy. How do I make her look more evil? This jelly can maybe go in the pie. <laughs> Cold weather, celestial, biological. We've got that down. I even included like flowers. How does she sit down? I guess she just doesn't. Let me see if I can somehow make it a more winterly looking outfit. Well, but then like, this kind of like ruins the entire character design so far. Can we lose like the hair when we do this? Cause I feel like the long hair doesn't quite make as much sense. So I bundled it up, made the hat a little smaller. 
just because that looks like something that was common in that era. No, I don't think it quite fits. I'm gonna stick with this. She's got long sleeves, so it's not like she's dressed for like the beach or anything. <laughs> so I think that's fine. Maybe didn't give it the time of day, but I don't, I just, I don't care for it. My biggest predicament right now is, well, the bad guy, talented stuff, but like the celestial idea because snails are obviously very earthy. They spend a lot of time close to the earth. So I need to find a way to make it celestial. You know, I wonder if I could find a pose that's just floaty. So just like give it a bit of an angel appearance, like art where you're just sort of like not touching the ground. That would give it like an airy, spacey vibe. And then maybe I can start including more stars or something to that. I don't know, let's start real small. Let's see if I can get some kind of silhouette that works with this body, that S shape they were talking about on that one website. <laughs> how do I, uh, see that's, that's, oh, that's a problem. How do I make it look like a snail, but also floaty? That doesn't really happen, you know? <laughs> I feel like I'm breaking the laws. I'm gonna give her a little bit of a, use her umbrella, like Mary Poppins here. <laughs> so now the skirt section ends up being really big when I do this. It doesn't really look like a slug at all. I think to make her look a little bit more bad, I gotta give her like a lot of confidence in her actions because I think that's just something uh, that bad people require. They've uh, drowned out their conscience, I assume. <laughs> so they have to have a lot of confidence that they're doing the right thing or they'd find it hard to be bad, you know? I'm gonna try and draw her chin up a little higher like she's looking down at people. Mm, I definitely don't think I can draw her floaty. Definitely ended up a lot closer to humanoid than I expected at the beginning here. But that's definitely a fun thing about brainstorming is that you kind of can end up someplace you didn't realize you were even going just by allowing things to happen. I want to draw her, I don't know, interacting with someone. Just like maybe if she was scrunched up. So her skirt would be doing one of these things. I'm trying to draw like the body underneath it. I hope that'll help me out. Here we go. <laughs> Maybe there's a little kid. Maybe she's offering him a pie. <gasps> no. <laughs> Look at that. The poor innocent child. What's the pie going to do? Look at a little boy. I don't draw enough male characters. Oh, he's so hungry. He's like, yes. I have not had pie in my whole life. Oh no! Oh, I really like this pose with the scrunchies. The scrunched up snail. <laughs> but what does the pie do? We can't just have it like be poison. That's just lame. <laughs> it's getting confusing. <laughs> the butt's like back here behind the hair. So it's a little tricky to make that obvious. I lost it in the details there. Now, when he eats the pie, uh, what happens? What happens? Maybe it turns him into a rose? <gasps> Which she then puts in her hat. <gasps> Ooh! So her hat is full of little kids who took pies from strangers. That's the moral of the story. Don't take samples at Costco. No. <laughs> you don't know them. You're just gonna eat their food. Unless you wanna get turned into a rose. So all these little roses are just like, don't do it. The deliciousness ain't worth this. <laughs> Pie is filled with such sweet jelly that upon consuming it, you turn into a rose, which she then, she uses to adorn her hat. That's a little uh, creepy. <laughs> Obviously, if this was a story, there'd be some way to save the roses, I guess. Yeah, well, I made her evil. Okay, are you happy now? <laughs> and she's talented because she makes the best pies in the world. That's not what I wanted, but I think we're just gonna have to accept what's been given to me. She's very talented. She makes very delicious pies. All right, we still need to do coloring for the neutral color palette. Uh, the jelly, that's, we put jelly inside the pie. I don't know if that's not how you make pies, but it's fine. Uh, celestial, that's the last thing we're missing. So maybe she's not really a snail, but she's an alien. <laughs> Hiding among men, turning your children into flowers. That's a, it's a really weird idea to be sure. 
But it's got kind of like that uh, Grimm's fairy tale vibe to it, which I kind of like, even though I'm not the biggest fan of Grimm's fairy tale. <laughs> you know, they're kind of grim. Oh, we lost your optical tentacles and your sensory tentacles. I feel like those are important. These will be the kids of the story that take down this ferocious snail lady. There we go. It's kind of like a Hansel and Gretel sort of thing, <laughs> but on the streets of a busy city and no one seems to notice. Whoa, which is creepier in my opinion. Now that I think about it, do snails like eat flowers or anything? Land snails enjoy plants, fungi, and algae. So maybe she does eat them. Oh, I don't like that. <laughs> Plant matter, vegetables, lettuce, dandelions, cucumbers, and carrots. I hate her so much now. Leave the kids alone. I don't like that she picks on kids. Why did I do this? You know what? How do the kids take her down? Maybe they steal her hat or something. <laughs> Running from the witch. Running from ferocious. Maybe the kids give her her name. That's why her name suits her so well. Oh my gosh, running is so hard to draw. And a skirt even. They steal the hat. Maybe they plant the flowers. Why did I draw two kids? Now? And then they grow back into children. It's a kid. Yay, happy ending. We need to go back to Ferocious though and uh, finalize her design. Maybe add some colors. Well, obviously we need to add some colors, but her palette is supposed to be very neutral. Ooh, I really like this sketch still. Ooh, okay. And maybe we'll try to add some like galaxies or something somewhere. I might hop into my computer and draw it digitally. Thumbnail pose idea. Do that S curve posture, the Edwardian thing. Nail shell, tail, with lots of flowers. Ooh, maybe the flowers. So she's gonna have a super neutral color palette, but then her flowers are going to be all different colors because they're children. And then as the children give up hope, they'll slowly become more neutral colors too. So most of her flowers will probably be very bright and cheerful. Why don't you hold the pie like this? Skirt section down here. That way we can use color that complements the character design and even kind of tells a story. There's really only one pose she looks good in. Well, I like this one too, but like one that like shows off the character really well. And maybe when they bring the children back, it kills Ferocious. So she's like, oh, dead. Crushed by her own shell. <laughs> She loses all her powers. Classic. I think I managed to get all the prompts like to fit together in some way. I think the last thing we need to do is just make a colored version. So I'm going to start off with like a colored pencil here and lay out our pose on the paper. And then maybe we can use some Copic markers or something. I'll try to change up the pose just a little. Maybe draw her more head on. We haven't done that. Let me just see if it actually is possible. <laughs> That's always a good thing to check. Big snail shell behind her. Have lots of flowers. Oh, you know what? That one forgot these things again. Go ahead and erase this pencil that kind of interacts with it so I can. No, so I don't have to worry about that. Really wanted to make sure we keep some of those fun shapes. I'm exaggerating like the hips and like the ankles and things like that just so that you have more interesting fun shapes. Looks texture. <laughs> I like these little uh, optical feel. No, sensory tentacles. They kind of give me like earring vibes, which would not translate in real life, but with art it does. <laughs> Add that to the list of reasons I like art more than real life. Woo! I'm gonna have to test some colors before I throw them in here. You now you got like grays. I don't really have a lot of desaturated browns. I think with the Copic color system, you want the second number to be a really low number for it to be less saturated. I don't want it to all just be grayscale though. It just gives too off too much of an evil vibe. Like how is she supposed to trick kids when she looks like that? You know, <laughs> that's my opinion. So I might just start including some other tones too. I'm throw in some purple and see what happens. Doesn't usually steer me wrong. All right, that's feeling a little bit more approachable. I think we're heading in the right direction. I wonder if we add some straight black, if that would just add a little contrast and 
I hardly ever, actually, I don't think I've ever used my black Copic marker. All right, she's seeming a lot more approachable now. She's got like a little bit more, I don't know, she looks a little less raggedy. She still looks like an old widow who hates children though, <laughs> which maybe she is, but I don't want it to show. I don't want it to be too obvious. <laughs> you do something really crazy and like throw in some orange. Yuck. Yeah, no, that's not the answer. Not feeling it. Let's go ahead and throw in some line art on this. See where that takes me. And a couple leaves in there. Ah, my hand bent. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> Keep going. Probably could have done better than that. I'm just not sure if I'm going to be using this sketch now at this point. Since I added color there, it's not gonna show as nicely as if I hadn't. Looks pretty fed up with the world. I love it. Yeah, I do think I'm going to move over to some digital art just so that I have more freedom with the colors. And I do think I'll be able to get a better result. So what I'm going to do is probably, you know, sketch it out, figure out the pose and make sure that it's something that I'm happy with. And then I'll probably, you know, sketch over that sketch. You know, I call it my second sketch layer and I'll find the details and everything, really iron out what I want uh, Ferocious to look like. That was her name, right? Yes, it was. <laughs> Then I'll probably, you know, do line art. I think I'll keep it kind of simple and poppy, pop arty, you know, thick line art. And then after that, I'll probably add in some colors. So this is gonna probably be the hardest part because it's what I put the least amount of work into here. But I'm gonna try and keep the colors kind of neutral, but have like pops of something bright to draw your eye in different directions. Like I want you to look at the pie and like the roses on her hat because those are like important for her story um i don't know if i want the like shell to be super obvious but i guess i'll figure that out um then what else is here is that it i just had color maybe a little bit of shading obviously the color is going to be the thing that takes the longest because it's going to take a lot of experimentations but once i find something that i'm pretty happy with i think it'll start going smoothly you know once i get that idea for it and feel for it uh, yeah, and then that'll be it. So <laughs> hopefully it turned out well. Tell me what you think. How do you like Ferocious, our snail, our evil snail lady? Uh, yeah, who uh, tricks children into eating pies, turning them into flowers. Yeah. <laughs> so that is our character based off the suggestions and the replies to the polls that you gave me. Thanks for participating over on my Instagram. While that's happening, I can do what I want over here. I'm just gonna throw in some color though. I oh, probably should show you the beginning here. Our humble beginnings. I think when I drew this one, that's when I was like, ooh, I kind of like this idea. And then this one turned out really nicely. Maybe went a little downhill, but hopefully the digital one turns out better. I haven't done it yet. You let me know. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys all next week and I hope you have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye.